This conference is brought to you by CodeStack, React and React Native development experts. Hi, everyone. I am glad to have the opportunity to be participating again in React Native EU, especially in this virtual edition, where more of us can get a pretty good idea of what has been happening in the React Native community for the past year, as well as with the library itself from wherever in the world we are located. I am Monica Restrepo, a software engineer currently helping build one of the most innovative mobile applications dedicated to fitness and the well-being of our users at the Equinox Medium. Today, I would like to share with you some general findings about the most popular debugging tools for React Native applications. A topic that caught my attention recently, while we were having a debate whether to switch fully to use Flipper or continue in using React Native Debugger for our debugging purposes. To be honest, the majority of my time working with React Native applications, I have been using the React Native Debugger as my main debugging tool. But seeing some of the positive arguments in pro of using Flipper and even React to Tron left me with the curiosity of exploring these other tools I knew very little about to see what were the pros and cons of each, so I could take informed decisions when it comes to picking my main debugging tool. Spoiler alert, Flipper and React Native Debugger ended up being similar in what they can accomplish. React to Tron ended up being a little bit of an outcast in this comparison, yet still offer some great functionality. But before we jump into talking about these debugging frameworks, I think it is very important for us, or at least it was very important for me, um, to talk about bugs. What are the most common bugs we often found within our applications? Multiple resources online point to many types of bugs that can really appear when developing mobile applications. Majority of these bugs are concentrated in these three different areas. We have app-specific bugs, platform-specific bugs, and those related to your app's architecture. App-specific bugs are the type of bugs we found more often within our apps. They are mostly usability and UI bugs. Network request issues are part of them, CSS issues, and broken buttons, for instance. Then we have the, the platform-specific bugs. When you have made your way into mobile development, mostly to React Native and the front-end front end side of things, like I did, you love this type of bugs. These are the type of bugs related exclusively to the platform the app is being run from, Android and iOS, for instance. Most of the time, these bugs are related to the way both operating systems work within the device and their native capabilities. It is very common for them to imply patchy solutions on the engineering side because both platforms could, could react differently to changes. Some of the most common things uh, to cause us problems in our React Native applications related to platforms are scroll views overlays, view uh, animations, transitions, and interpolations, deep linking, display properties, keyboard upset, and so on. And finally, we have bugs related to the elements of the app architecture. These bugs are related also to the business logic of the app. They are usually hard to detect by the programming eyes because they, they imply you have a very deep understanding of the business model and the app as a whole. Bugs in, the, in this area include things related to incorrect data flow or bubble and side effects for features. So for instance, a user that wants to join a specific group within the app and, the changes, and then changes to this user happen in another unrelated section of it. So what option does React Native offer for debugging besides our beloved and often very useful console log? Let's start with Flipper. Flipper is a platform for debugging iOS, Android, and React Native apps, as I, as I had mentioned before. Support for it has added, uh, was added to React Native since the version 0.62. This is the interface for Flipper. It, is, it obviously doesn't include the slides decor in the background, by the way. I personally find it to be really, really clean and easy to navigate. This is very important because debugging itself can be really overwhelming sometimes, let alone if you have to also untangle a complex UI. Flipper runs detached from the React Native debugger. It is, it is a totally independent um, desktop, desktop application 
to which you can connect your mobile app given the right setup. This can be considered a pro for, for some of us, since we can kill some of the overload that the native debugger brings when running on some of our application threads. Some others might consider this a negative point, so it really is up to, you, to your wor workflow to determine that. Flipper Remains functionality lives in the App Inspect section. From here, we don't only get to access our app, but we can also connect to more than one application. The section below, where you see those four icons, allows us to bring the debugging menu out and even record and take screenshots of um, what is happening with, with the app at a specific time. Then we have the device section from which we can access the crash reporter and device logs. We have the React Native section as well with access to React Native specific logs and access to Hermes when we are using either Android Studio or an Android device. Lastly, we have what I think is one of the most, um, sorry, I was a little off with that. Lastly, we have what I think is one of the most important parts of this debugger. This enable section here displays the plugins we have enabled for using uh, during a session. Majority of our UI box can be found hidden behind failing props, failing CSS rules, and uh, platform-specific things. This is where this section uh, becomes really valuable. The layout plugin allows us to inspect the layout of our application. We can see here our views listed in their nested order and in uh, and then also a layout of the CSS styling those views every, every property with every property of, the, of them. We can also see the accessibility properties available to each component, which is also very useful. Then we also have the shared preferences, um, which allows us to easily inspect and modify the data contained within your app's shared preferences. Things like the available keyboards on either the emulators or the connected device um, emoji configuration, privacy and settings and such are included in this section. When it comes to usability bugs, the ones that affect how your app works rather than how it looks, investigating network requests is perhaps the main step towards understanding what is going on when something is broken or not functioning as planned. Flipper's network plugin is very useful and complete to my point of view because it allows us to check requests and request bodies headers and responses, and it allows you to also change, in, uh, change the formatting of the responses, which I found really useful as well when you want to see everything in a more like clear way, like in a JSON sort of way. If you work with Apollo, this is a, um, there is a Flipper plugin available that is fairly easy to install and use, except investigating caching issues might still be an issue. So this is where you get the, uh, the plugins. If you use libraries like Re uh, React Native Reanimated for your animations, remote debugging is not possible since the library uses uh, GSI for synchronous native methods access. So this is a, it's a negative point for Flipper in this case. But Flipper becomes your best option so far for debugging code that uses React Reanimated, with the only caveat of Flipper not yet being able to connect the debugger to the JavaScript context. To finish with Flipper, I think it is worth mentioning that one of the things that I found Flipper is, um, is lacking right now is the fact that it doesn't allow you to, uh, to set breakpoints, which to me, it is an important step on debugging data flows within an app. Other than that, Flipper is definitely a solid alternative to debugging your React Native applications. Let's move on into React Native Debugger. React Native Debugger helps you debug in pretty much everything Flipper does, layout props, metro logs, network requests, and so on, with the difference of allowing to use breakpoints. Among some of the good things of the debugger is clearly the fact that um, it is a functionality that is out of the box. You don't need to install a desktop application like in Flipper, if that is something that concerns you. I also found it to be easy, I also found to be easy to debug Apollo and GraphQL um, issues, especially uh, when it comes to caching exploration. But that's, that is just a preference. Flipper also allows you to do this. Logs are displayed in a similar way as it is in Flipper, as you can see here. So there isn't much to elaborate here. 
The source tab is perhaps one of the most useful um, ones. And knowing how to work with breakpoints in this one is definitely a booster when it comes to debugging data and components properties flows. From the source tab, uh, we can see our file structure, set up breakpoints uh, at pretty much any place within your file. Check for the scope of our code is being in which our code is being run, uh, run within, and the call stack for function calls. It offers also the option to check uh, for your event listeners and such. When it comes to debugging network requests, I definitely found Flipper's interface to be a little bit more intuitive and easy to use. I don't consider this to be the strongest feature of the native debugger, yet you still can get a lot done with it. In the network tab, um, you will be able to check for the type of network requests being performed and response times. If your application uses GraphQL, you can mix and match with the Apollo client extension for Chrome and get a pretty good understanding of, of your data flows and um, in the cache, as I was mentioning before. The native debugger also gives you the opportunity to, to do some memory profiling and, ana and analyze performance issues. Features really valuable when it comes to upgrade your app's performance and identify where resources are consuming the most memory and taking the majority of a device CPU. In terms, in terms of some of the cons of um, I have found with the React Native Debugger in comparison with Flipper, I would say that one of them is the not being able to install different plugins. Though so far it ha I haven't found anything that I'm actually missing, but that point definitely goes to Flipper. The fact, the fact that the debugger runs with the debug mode turned on can also make your application a bit slower. It also depends on your machine, but it's also something you have to take into consideration. And um, as I had previously mentioned, inspecting network requests isn't the React Native Debugger's best feature either. It has some known limitation, but you can always enhance your debugger for this particular task by categorizing some of your app's events by network event with some specific params according to what you consider is worth logging about. Luckily for us, if using React Native Debugger for deep network analysis isn't enough, that is always Charles. All right, um, I think it is time for us to move into React to Tron. Let's take a look to what E can offer in terms of debugging our apps. React to Tron is sort of an old school debugger, similar to the two previous ones, actually. It is also a debugger, but besides aiming to debug only React Native applications, it is also useful for debugging Mac, uh, Mac OS applications, Windows, and Linux applications. To get React to turn app and running with your application, you need to also download the desktop app and make sure you configure it within your app. It is very similar to Flipper in this sense. With React to Tron, you can do pretty much the same things you do with, other, uh, with the other two debuggers. Inspect network requests, dispatch actions using the GUI to see how the app responds to it. I think this is exclusively to React to Tron, actually. Um, and I really consider it a valuable feature when it comes to aiming to understand the reasons for some usability bugs. You can also run quick performance benchmarks and subscribe to parts of your application state. Use logs, track lo uh, global errors, and track your sagas for those um, of you using Redux. And well, show image overlay in React Native, track your asynch uh, asynchronous storage in React Native as well. React to Trans UI is more or less similar to Flipper's with a few less features, such as installing plugins, and as well as Flipper, it doesn't allow you to use breakpoints. We can see here how we can also debug uh, you know, network calls, and this is the dispatch action where you can modify what you dispatch into the actions to also see how your app will react to it. My conclusion after using these three debugging tools is that at their current state, you can really accomplish pretty much everything in the same things using any of them. As a matter of fact, I think I will personally keep at least two of them available for me when one or the other is either causing a lot of overhead in my app, like if I'm using the React Native Debugger and things are really, really getting slow, or if I just want a more familiar user interface, then I'll go to Flipper, in my case in particular. Obviously, using React to Trump versus Flipper becomes kind of a business decision since there is some set setup that you have to do for them within the app. 
But once that is not an issue anymore, they both offer similar things to facilitate uh, our debugging. I am going to leave it here uh, with the hopes that you at least got more exposure to using other alternatives when it comes uh, to debugging your React Native applications. Thank you so, so much.